Hey everyone, what's up? Uh, welcome back to the garden. This is going to be kind of like a Dahlia haul type Dahlia review type situation. Don't really know what it's going to be, but a lot of you guys requested like, hey, which Dahlias are you adding to the garden this year? Um, I try to add Dahlias to the garden every single year because Dahlias are an investment and this year I will admit I went overboard. I went way over my budget, which I had set for the dahlias, but you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. I'm trying to start a flower farm in the future, hopefully, eventually, maybe. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. It happened. Let's get started. The first one I bought was Selwood Glory. This was from Dahlias by Julie. Um, this is an old timey kind of heirloom variety, and you can see uh, mostly it is dark purple with lots of interesting white streaking and veining. Uh, this one is very difficult to find and unfortunately uh, very hard very hard to order because uh, Dahlia's by Julie sells out very very quickly. Like literally you can be sitting there on the computer and hit refresh the moment it goes live and you can still not be able to get some of the varieties you want. So fortunately, I was able to get a very unique and interesting Selwood Glory, which I'm very excited about. In the past, I've grown Bradley Aaron, but uh, it will be interesting to kind of see the differences between these. Moving on to the next town of Dahlia that I ordered. Um, this next one is called a Fuzzy Wuzzy. Uh, this one is one that is pretty easy to find, but I've always been intrigued by it and interested in it. For whatever reason, I'm always drawn to dahlias that have the two colors, like the different color tips and the petals and things. This is from Old House Dahlias, uh, another great supplier that I've used in the past, uh, especially making orders from Old House Dahlias. Uh, it seems like there's always an extra tuber in there and the tubers are of a great quality. So I know I get asked a lot of questions about where to buy tubers. That's maybe one that you might consider if you live in the United States. Uh, you'll see here in a little later in the video, I ordered some other ones from that website. These aren't in any particular order, by the way. Uh, this is just how I kind of saved them and cropped them into the video. Hopefully it looks all right and nothing's blurry. Uh, next, I bought caramel corn or caramel corn, however you like to say it. This one is from Swan Island Dahlias. I tried to grow this one last year and failed. Uh, through my own fault but as you can see the color is very much a kind of peachy orange and you have those kind of toothy petals around the outside which I really really like um, hopefully I can get this one to bloom last year um, it was just in a bad spot in the garden and the tuber ended up rotting which I wasn't happy about of course but we're gonna try again because I really really uh, want to grow that one I'm, I'm just a sucker for those kind of orangey kind of caramel peach tones for whatever reason. I just can't get enough of them. Uh, moving on to the next uh, and staying with the same kind of color scheme, I guess. Uh, you can definitely notice a pattern with colors that I picked for the garden this year. Um, we have our dahlia called Mingus Leroy. Uh, rather than being a peachy color, this one stays on, on par with the kind of purple pink tones that I really, really love, and those kind of wacky, crazy petals that I really, really love. Um, we have, I think these are called lacinated. Don't quote me on that. I know I'm working on learning my flower words. I really am. Uh, my descriptors, I'm working on getting better at that. This one also came from Old House Gardens. Uh, I think this will really look nice with a lot of the other colors that I already have in the garden. I'm kind of working on building up my stock of more kind of purple lavender flowers because like I said, I do have a lot of oranges and pinks. So uh, anything that I can buy to kind of diversify that was great. And hopefully, you know, we can grow these and keep multiplying them in the future. So I'm looking forward to that. Next, we have Optic Illusion. This one is from Frog Hollow Dahlia Farms. As you can see, this one is purple, but it's very, very interesting because it has these like weird looking secondary petals coming out of the dahlia. Like what? That is so cool and unique and um, just totally different than anything else that I have in my garden right now. So I figured I would give it a shot. Also, I'll be sure to put the links to all of these websites that I'm mentioning down in the description. Should also note that this is not a sponsored video. None of these people have sponsored me. I'm just telling you where I'm buying stuff. 
Uh, this year, I went all with independent suppliers supporting actual real people, which is why the tubers are a little bit pricier. But hey, I know what they are. I know where they come from. And they're grown by people who actually care. Uh, the next one I got is from Connell's Dahlias. This is Tahoma Tempest. This is, again, with the kind of um, white and purple pink uh, kind of theme that I've been going with. I couldn't resist this one because I thought the streaking on it was just so cool. And we have those kind of ruffly petals that I am a total sucker for. Um, really excited to grow this one and see what it looks like in person. Connell's Dahlias is a great resource. Uh, they're so affordable. Um, that one was a little bit more expensive because it was a new introduction, but a lot of them are like $4. And a lot of my favorites came from there. Like Margie Day last year came from Connell's and it was $4. And it made tubers like crazy. Uh, just very good bargain. And again, people who actually care about, you know, what they're selling. Next, we have the uh, Kamano Mystery. Uh, this one, I couldn't resist. Usually, I don't go for like um, pinky red, reddish ones. And again, it might not even be red when we grow it. It just depends on the picture. But I really love the green center. I know that green centers aren't necessarily a thing, like, you know, a desirable thing. I personally love them. I know it depends on a lot of factors, whether it'll be green centered or, you know, Next, we have Happet Champagne, and wow, this one was so difficult to find. Uh, seriously, it seemed like everywhere I ordered Happet Champagne from was sold out, and I finally found one. Um, I've seen pictures of these on Instagram, and they always look so, so gorgeous, and again, here I am buying flowers that are this the pinkish champagne color. I don't know why I am so addicted to them. I'm also really excited about this year's Dahlia Garden because I have a solid plan for staking. I am determined to make this year's Dahlia Garden absolutely perfect, absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, we're going to cram it in this little backyard that we got. We're going to just jam it in there, but I am determined to make it work. Uh, the next one is another one that we have from Connell's Dahlias. This is Tahoma Thimble. And of course I was uh, dr immediately drawn to this one because it looks like it's a actually a tricolor maybe, possibly. We'll see what it looks like when it blooms. Um, but again, white, creamy looking orange peach and a little bit of yellow. Yes, please, sign me up. Um, I can't wait to see this one. I hope it is as cool as it looks in the picture because that will be awesome. The first dahlia that I ever grew was called Myrtle's Folly. And, you know, I really, really love that one. It's still one of my favorite dahlias. It's so beautiful. So when I saw Myrtle's Brandy, I figured I would go ahead and just give it a try. Uh, I did a Google search. Uh, lots of color variation with the Myrtle's Brandy. Sometimes they're a little more white. Sometimes they're a little more red. Um, but, again... Again, with the bicolors, colors for some reason, this season, I am just drawn to the multicolored blooms. I have no clue why. Um, you know, last year, I was obsessed with peach and pink and this bright pink and kind of oranges. So this year, it looks like I am obsessed with multicolor blooms. I guess we all kind of just go through phases, even when it comes to dahlias. Um, next up, we have one called Darcy. Uh, this is one that I tried to get last year, but unfortunately, it was sold out everywhere. And I finally did get my hands on one. So hopefully, we'll have a lot of success with that. You can see it's just a very, very pretty kind of yellow peach color. Uh, that will definitely blend right in with the other varieties that I have growing in the garden already. I've got a lot of them and, uh, you know... Even now, they're probably, mul even now they've multiplied since last year. So, uh, lots and lots of color to expect there. Another one is one that I have been trying to get for a few seasons now. This is Tyrell. I should mention that these are from Goldenrod. These last couple were from Goldenrod Gardens. Uh, Tyrell is a larger dahlia. And as you can see, it's got, it's got those shades of kind of pink and orange and a little bit of yellow. It kind of reminds me of Labyrinth based on this picture, but I don't think there's as much pink in these Tyrells as the Labyrinth. So I'm really eager to grow those. I think those will look really, really nice in combination with some of the other flowers that I have growing uh, here in the garden. 
Uh, in the comments below, be sure to tell me which dahlias you are most excited to grow. Have you grown any of these ones that are new to me before? If so, I would love to hear about your experience with them because, you know, every little bit of information helps. That's that's for certain, especially, you know, I'm still learning, so I appreciate any information you have. And of course, your comment helps the channel. It helps the channel so, so much. I cannot emphasize that enough. Next, we have Bloom Quist Blush. I believe this is either from Fray's Dahlias or Frog Hollow Farms. I can't remember off the top of my head. But again, another kind of pink one with yellow in the center. Um, the more I see what I've actually purchased by compiling this video, um, the more I'm like, yeah, you have a noticeable pattern. I really, really need to work on selecting Dahlia varieties that kind of push me outside of my comfort zone. I've started doing that with seeds more so, and it's been really, really rewarding. So I need to start picking flowers that maybe I might not be immediately drawn to. Um, cause I'm always, it seems like I'm always pleasantly surprised when I pick something just kind of random, you know? Next we have, um, Kelgayan. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm probably not, but this is another one that I've been looking for. I tried to get it last year and it's very popular. Uh, this is a water lily type, but, um, it blooms the very, very beautiful shades of pink and white, just variations of pink and white. And um, I, I've seen these used in flower arrangements and I thought they were just absolutely just stunning. So hopefully we can get some really, really beautiful pink and white Kelgayan flowers in our garden. Uh, not to mention I already have a lot of pink flowers that I think that that will end up looking really, really beautiful with. Uh, so interesting to see that and see how that grows. Moving right along, we have Dahlia Lakeview Peach Fuzz. This is another one that was on my wish list for last year, and I was lucky enough to be able to order one. Um, again, with the crazy petals. What is up with me? Have I been, have, has there been some kind of subliminal message to me, like, get crazy dahlias with petals that are crazy? I don't know. Um, but... Again, this is another one that I've seen on Google and I've seen it on Instagram and I'm just like, oh, I have to have that. Oh, it's so pretty. I have to have it. What am I going to do? I have to have it. I know. I've got it. I've got a problem. I need to form some kind of support group like Dahlia's Anonymous or something. Next, we have Sugartown Sunrise. This is a smaller Dahlia and it's very, very reminiscent to me of the Wizard of Oz Dahlia in terms of size and shape. Uh, but you can see the pink seems to be just a little bit darker and a little bit more yellow at the top of it. Uh, it will be interesting to see how it performs here in our yard because, you know, over time I've definitely found that things in our yard definitely grow a lot differently than things in other people's yard. And that's to be expected. I mean, that's a lot hotter here. There's more water. I don't know. Next we have Tahoma Tailspin. Uh, this is just a big, huge pink one. The petals remind me of labyrinth in that they're kind of just, you know, loose and flowy looking. But the color is a very, very beautiful dark pink, according to the photo. I think this is going to be one of those ones that you see it in a picture and you're just like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Uh, but you grow it in person and the color is beautiful. Just something about it. Uh, I knew I needed to order one. I mean, we had a lot of dahlias last year. And um, I think in the future, I really need to be narrowing down my favorite big pink ones and things like that because I'm going to run out of space soon, especially with things like Lakeview Storm. Uh, this one reminds me a little bit of uh, Moonlight Sonata, Winds Moonlight Sonata reminds me a little bit of that based on the picture. Um, but I'm excited to see this one as well because I can never get enough of those dark oranges and kind of bronze colors here in my yard. Um, also, I have a weak spot for dinner plate dahlias. I'm not sure if that's a dinner plate. It looks like more of a decorative. But um, I love big dahlia flowers. Like the bigger, the better. Just, you know, huge ones. I don't even mind if the stems aren't that great for cut flowers because I just like to, you know, they're just so big. Uh, here's one, Harvey Coop, stepping out of my comfort zone. This looks nothing like I have in the garden. In general, in the garden, I don't have any, I have, I don't think I have any red flowers. I might have two, two red flowers. But, uh, this one is like 
variegated and you know it's got red and sometimes it looks orange sometimes it looks yellow I've seen all kinds of different pictures of it this is out of my comfort zone uh, very very excited for this one because I've heard rave reviews about it it seems like every every Dahlia store has it in stock so if everybody else is growing it it must have something going on that's worthwhile so I'm gonna give it give it a try I'm um, really excited to see those as well. I know I always just say, I'm really excited. I'm really eager. Oh, I can't wait. But, I mean, what else can I say? It's true. I really, really can't wait. I am so excited. I love growing dahlias. Okay, moving right along. Keep the show going. We have the Jersey Beauty. Uh, Jersey Beauty is another one that I've wanted to grow for a couple years now, and I was finally able to order it. Um, it's a older variety, much like Selwood Glory is an older variety. Um, Jersey Beauty is an older variety. It's considered oftentimes an heirloom variety of Dahlia. And you can see it's just a beautiful pink. It's just a solid, beautiful pink. And hopefully my bushes will have that many blooms on it because, wow, that's actually really, really gorgeous. Um, I'm a sucker for just a plain pink bloom. That's one of the reasons I loved Islander so much, growing Islander in my garden, because it's gorgeous. It's worth the hype. It's awesome. Uh, moving right along, we're almost to the end. I told you guys that I went over budget. I warned you that I went over budget with the dahlias. You know, I got to do a better job of budgeting for the garden. I guess, I mean, I needed to buy a new pair of pants this month, but, you know, I guess that went out the window. Um, and I guess I won't be buying, uh, you know, groceries or something. I'll have to take something off my grocery list to balance this out because I got spending problems, y'all. We also bought Ice Cube. Um, Ice Cube Dahlia, very, very pretty, very hard to find. In the past, I've ordered it from a wholesale website, and they just sent me whatever crap they had on hand, and they were like, oh, well, ha, 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 and it was not Ice Cube. So this time around, I ordered from an independent supplier who actually cares what they sell you, and hopefully it will be Ice Cube. I'm fairly confident it will be, but I'm very, very excited to see that because anytime I've seen Ice Cube, it's been gorgeous. Just the markings and the petals, and oh, I love it. I'm so excited. Uh, next up, and last but certainly not least, uh, we have a Dahlia that is called Patches. Uh, Patches is just another, it's another bicolor dahlia, and it has the markings of kind of purple and white, and, um, hopefully it'll have, um, just mostly white is what I really, really want, because you get that kind of very, very pretty pattern when that happens, when they bloom like that, but of course, flowers might be solid purple, they might be, you know, half and half. You really never know what to expect with these kind of flowers, but that's part of the fun of it is that we never know what to expect. That's the fun part. That's really about it for this video. I hope that it was helpful. I'm not quite sure if it was. Uh, as I've already mentioned, if you've grown any of these dahlias that I've showed here in the past in your own garden, uh, please tell me all about it in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. If you're new to the channel, uh, be sure to subscribe. I'd absolutely love to have you. Hit that little bell icon. It'll give you notifications whenever we post a new video. Mostly we make videos about cut flowers, growing cut flowers, sometimes growing vegetables and fruits, uh, different DIY projects and things like that. So if you like a little bit of surprise, you might like this channel as well. Uh, be sure to share with a friend. Tell somebody about our channel, about our videos. We are always trying to grow our little garden community here. And that just helps us so, so much. Um, as always, the links to everything is down in the description. This includes Instagram. Be sure to go follow us on Instagram. We would love to have you over there as well. Posting lots of pictures as well as links to our blog, which is can give you a little bit more information about the things that you see here. Um, and some photos, of course. And our link to Patreon, which helps support the channel and helps me. Uh, you know, get help with editing and all kinds of stuff because, let's face it, I am just one person. I don't have a cameraman or anything. And I'm just learning and I'm trying to do my best and share my garden with y'all. Uh, that's about it. I hope that you are having such an incredible day. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.